If we talk about current occlusal concepts, chondral position is going to be variable if there's a loss of TM joint dimension. If we're trying to see this joint, as Mark said earlier this morning, it's really understandable how two different practitioners could see the joint very well and get different chondral positions given <coughs> the amount of space that's available now to see that condo. Does that make sense? So, really, and I'll explain this to the patients, the TM joint's the foundation of the occlusion. I say this a lot, the lower teeth are just along for the ride. The lower teeth end up based upon what happens at the hinge position. And we have to start integrating that because simply we're just looking at tooth position now for the most part and assuming that that joint's either normal or adaptive. And in reality, when we start to see that amount of spatial change, it's not adaptive. It may not hurt, but it doesn't mean it's adapted from a mechanical or a structural perspective. The other thing in terms of history is a class two bite. If I have a lack of mandibular projection, as you can take a look at Mary, right away, it should be obvious that when we take a look at her chin, she's not developing. There is the cone beam on her conduct. So when we start to see that type of imaging breakdown in this early a patient, she was 17 years old when she first saw me. Um, you can see the problems now become obvious. An orthodontic treatment for a class two, anytime I hear a patient say they had headgear, they had functional appliances, they had upper first premolars taken out, I'm beginning automatically to think loss of dimension in the joint, the headgear is trying to restrict upper jaw growth and let the lower catch up. Why does the lower need to catch up? Because there's been a dimensional loss in the joint. <clears throat> the same thing, functional appliance is trying to bring the jaw forward, the lower jaw forward. Why does the lower jaw need to be brought forward? Loss of dimension in the joints. This is a girl, Reagan, that Mark treated probably two years ago with back crafting. Um, but again, the chin starts to give it away when we start to take a look. Now we can see her bone. And you can start to see the changes that occur. Tremendous amount of bone changes. I, I, I would have never thought that the <coughs> condo would have been that small before I started imaging. And again, these are the cases that we have to be able to recognize early. As Mark said earlier today, by the time they get to adults and they need the mandibular advancement, that means we've missed it earlier in life. So the earlier in life we can pick that up, the better options we're going to have. Um, and any type of mandibular advancement or orthognathic surgery for me is automatically a, a, an indication to take a look at the joints. So we take a look at Jackie. Jackie's an interesting case. I saw Jackie probably six or seven years ago. I've not seen her since. Uh, her father was a Emergency room physician came in, explained that she had a joint problem, we took a cone beam, and now you can start to see the amount of structural changes that occurred. But take a look at where she's functioning. Look how far forward she's functioning in order to get the best bite possible that she can get. She's all the way past the crest of the eminence there. Now, here's the problem. I said they need to go down and see Mark. The dad went to the hospital, talked to the oral surgeon. The oral surgeon said, just do the surgery, fix the bite, do the advancement, and if she has pain, give her steroid injections in the joint. I don't know how that somehow becomes accepted treatment without even looking at imaging. Any other joint in the body, that discussion never occurs. This is the only joint we watch deteriorate as people grow. 